Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Space 2. So, I think plus 15% food is a pretty good starting um, constellation. I assume that the other constellations are host to other players, but the, uh, the Fornax constellation, which gives bonus industry, which I think is probably the best uh, bonus over the course of the game as a whole, is currently unowned. I'm thinking we need to pick up some knowledge about this uh, this constellation. Did I rec or did I research free motion yet? I didn't. Okay, let's throw that on the end of our research queue. Um, we should get over to Fornax and try to make our next three settles there. See if we can race to get control of it. Because plus fifteen percent industry for a bunch of our worlds at no cost to us seems like it'd be awfully useful. Um, its bonus will be applied to your systems within it. Okay, yeah, so it is only two systems that are within that constellation, but still, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, Talitha is useful, but we can probably get control of the Talitha system without having to spend a settling charge on it by just convincing the Calgaros to join our empire, which I think we should be able to do. So yeah, for right now, this is my plan. We gotta get over to Jaya, um, obviously... Origa is valuable. Uh, so this guy is actually going to change his, uh, change his path a little bit. We're not going to go down here. I don't care about what's down there enough. Well, I guess let's let's move to here for now. We'll, we'll figure it out. It's going to be three turns before we have free movement. It's probably faster for us to move to here, wait, free move to here, and then move across from there. It is worth noting that free movement is still considerably slower than moving through space lanes, but it's probably faster than like moving around this awkward shape. And remember, once we have the ability to build a portal in this constellation, it'll be really easy for our ships to move back and forth. Plus, actually, we need to go over here anyway, right? Because we know that there's a pirate system, or at least I suspect that there's a pirate system over there. Alright, the probes are still running. We should probably, at some point, uh, build some military vessels. Right now, we are easy pickings, and we do know that there's another player who knows our position. Okay, extra vision range on the, the first bold experiment has run out. That's a real good name for an exploration fleet. Opening your empire's doors to new population types has its challenges, but also its rewards. Each new group adds to the strength and flexibility of a society, contributing to the maturity of your empire as a whole. So, get a new population type, gain 80 influence. We don't currently have any Calgaros in the empire, do we? Oh, jeez. Uh, there's a demographic screen somewhere. You'll have to forgive my rustiness with the UI here. Uh, I demand that you forgive me. Where is the population screen? I remember it's, like, kind of awkwardly hidden away. Is it in here somewhere? Oh, right there, the census, the population details. Okay, yeah, so we have Zvali, Sisters of Mercy, and Valters. So getting the Calgaros uh, hooked up will solve that quest, and that's something we're interested in doing anyway. Let's have a chat with these guys. What's up? Oh, we can't praise them because we still don't have the tech that actually allows us to talk to them. And our plus influence boost is about to run out from revealing all those curiosities. It's going to run out right as it hits 50, which is going to push us to a new level of relation rewards. So that's cool. Uh, pragmatists provide more science. Yeah. And these guys have the minus 20% system development luxury cost trait, which we would get if we assimilated them. I'm not sure how this will apply to using strategic resources as system development resources, because it's not a thing other races can do. And so while it says luxury cost on the tooltip, I'm wondering if that's maybe just because until the Vaulters came out, all system development costs were luxury costs, and if this might actually, you know, functionally apply to strategics. I guess we'll find out. And I know that um, anybody who's new to the game doesn't even know what I'm talking about yet with the system upgrades. Don't worry, it's all, it's all coming. So... We should probably start getting our science stuff built. 
Uh, we have plenty of room. We don't need to colonize Leo 1 yet. 51062 versus 1660. Okay, yeah. Population units that are on Leo 1 will just produce way less value than those that are on Leo 2. So yeah, let's start building science buildings because we uh, need to accomplish this quest. We still haven't actually gotten into that. Six turns left on the Golden Age. That's long enough to uh, to somewhat rush the construction of both of those science buildings. I wonder... I wonder if it really is going to be faster to wait, because we're going to have to just sit here for a turn. Now let's fire off some probes. So we can see the edge of the pirate system's influence. We know it's not very far down there. That probe will completely reveal it. Let's try to get some information ahead of our arrival. We're now amicable with these guys. And we are their sovereigns. Whoever gets to whoever gets to amicable first becomes the sovereign. Uh, you gain access to a special action. I think that's this. So, at the cost of 15 deciduous trees, which we have never seen, I think... Oh, you know what? When we got that message that we had become aware of these, maybe it was because they told us, Hey, if you got any of these trees, we'd really love those. Um, so we could temporarily increase its yields and give us ac give, gain access to its faction trait briefly by paying them some of the resource they really like. And that has political impact, as everything does. Obviously, we're going to push for assimilation. So the way that you do that is you, uh, once you move your relation value to 75, you can offer to assist them. You pay them some dust, and they give you a quest. And if you complete the quest, you automatically assimilate them. We also could instead push our relation value to 100, and at 100 you can just pay some influence and assimilate them without having to do a quest. We'll see how that stuff works out. We probably do need to pick up off-world agribusiness, though, just so that we have the ability to properly speak to them. And we can speak to them, we just can't schmooze very effectively. Also, unfortunately, our probes over here are not really revealing anything interesting. Okay. Never mind. That's interesting. We just met another, uh, another race. The Empire will not tolerate this. Okay, we'll be back to you. Hold on a second. The Empire has a proposal. Something to consider what... Alright. So we actually, we haven't... We haven't met these guys enough for them to have sent us a message. Can I send them a message? Did we get close enough for that? Uh, I want diplomatic status. The unfallen we did. You in the hopes that your goal is greater harmony. So these guys are trees. Space trees. Let's say hello. The unfallen greet you in the hopes that They're your mostly goal pretty peaceful. Uh, we might be able to be friends. The unfallen greet you again. Yep. They do. <laughs> the uh, leaders have some voice lines for getting annoyed if you repeatedly contact them in short periods of time. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't actually affect your diplomatic negotiations. Alright, I'm just making sure I'm familiar with what all the things mean. So, our influence pressure value here... Uh, I'm not 100% sure how it works with these guys, but in general, once you make contact with another empire and your borders start to push against each other, uh, the person who has higher influence will slowly uh, gain pressure on this meter, and then once you have enough pressure, you can start making demands. I've not really used that system too much. Oh, there's new stuff here, too. This is new. Through a deluge of formal diplomatic requests and actions, you manage to clutter diplomatic channels with this empire and increase your pressure. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. That's the kind of thing that'll get you shot, but it's interesting. Uh, well, I assume that they would not be... Oh no, this is, sorry, this is just share our maps. Yeah, they're not interested in the map trade. So this is the one of the things that the influence resource is used for. Uh, in addition to maintenance of your government, the more complex governments requiring more, co more uh, influence to manage, 
Uh, influence is the resource that is used to offer treaties and trades to other players. Uh, you, you do not have unmetered trading in this game as you do in most games, so it's important that each trade actually be worth the price you're paying for it. We don't really have a lot of diplomatic stuff to do with them right now. Uh, let's deal with this nonsense. So... They're extorting us based on the fact that we don't have any uh, troops. They know that they could just come over here and take our stuff if, if they wanted to, but it's a lot of effort. And they would prefer we just give them a small amount of dust. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now listen, I know all about the ineffectiveness of Danegeld, but we need time to establish a military because we're really not, like, this is not a permanent situation is where I'm going with that. So yeah, this will be faster, the free move. After we get off World Agribusiness, we're going to have to get some military tech going. And now this is a part of the game that's pretty different than when I played, is my understanding. So we're going to pick up Efficient Shielding, which gives us access to Arrow and Bolt class hulls. These will be the base upon which we will build our first combat ships. And then as we continue to move up this tree, the Empire Development uh, side of the wheel, We'll get access to larger, more impressive hulls, uh, and that's that's a good start. We're also going to need to move up the military development uh, path in order to gain access to better weapon and, and armor modules so that we're actually like good at fighting with the ships we're building. So we have access to some basic torpedoes and slugs. There's uh, several different types of weapons, each of which have different concerns and are effective at different ranges. Uh, and and th like I said, this stuff has changed completely. They did a total rebalance of the combat systems since I last played. So we're gonna get to explore all that together. <laughs> Drink. Yeah. Oh no, no, it will not be forgotten. Don't you worry. Walters have long, cryogenically preserved memories. I don't think we have anything else that we need to do in this turn. Now we're building stuff. Okay. Let's try to find another another place to settle because the Argosi is ready and it wants to do stuff. We'll start moving it this way at the very least. So once we have efficient shielding, like I said, we'll build our first combat modules for or our first combat ships. For now, I guess we're just uh, waiting. Low prices of red saying, healthy stocks above 25 and no demand change have led to low, rogue traders buying to corner the market. Alright, there's a whole marketplace thing with an economic system, some kind of simulations happening behind the scenes. We are just not even a part of this part of the game. This game has a lot of systems. Uh, we are not prepared to interact with all of them. Okay, well, we didn't find anything out that was useful before our ship actually got to where it was going. I overestimated the amount of time it was going to take us to travel. So I guess we'll just follow the probes directly. There is a planet within Origa's system that we could put down on. I don't know that we necessarily want to, because it's kind of a crummy system. Yeah, a tiny tundra world, poor outputs. Uh, this steps planet is a little bit better. How far are we from being able to colonize such a world? Oh, not far at all. I'm not going to queue that up. What do we want next? So, over here we have access to food buildings, and obviously food's important. We probably want to pick up some food. We also need to keep advancing in this direction. Oh man, we haven't even talked about the Legendary Deeds system. Uh, so these are like achievements, right, that you can rush to and whoever gets to them first gets rewards. Uh, in this one, be the first to possess 20 star system, er, system improvements. We're actually doing alright on this. The reward of 75 Super Spuds is not totally mind-blowing. But uh, I think we want to research something from this tier next. Because as you go up, you unlock tier-related bonuses. So, like, for example, in the science uh, thing, which we have done quite a good job of, 
We've unlocked the ability to uh, find uncommon luxuries in our curiosities. We've developed new engines. Uh, the prize for properly unlocking the third tier of the economy and trade portion of the wheel is the system development system, which is valuable. We want this. So let's... Uh, we could grab galactic commodities, which would make us able to use the market that we were just hearing about. Multi-thread management, which enables the use of dust to rush construction, is a thing that exists in uh, in most 4X games, but here you have to tech for it. it. Prevents early dust windfalls from being like tremendously powerful, which I get. I think I think we want marketplace access. Uh, it also gives a, gives us access to a system improvement that helps us mine strategic resources more quickly, which is valuable for us for obvious reasons. We have a lot of things pulling on our titanium sources right now. All right, uh, Perseus. So in the Perseus system, we... Oh man, we are already filling up this planet. We need to... 01240 versus 016.20. Ah, but this planet makes us miserable. Look at that, minus eight approval per citizen living on Perseus 1. This is actually, we're just not well adapted to living on these planet types, and they are, this is a horrible place to be. Our citizens are ecstatic, because we have a lot of uh, approval coming from the Golden Age and everything. That's going to wear off. We do have to be a little bit careful. But, you know, the increased, um, the increased industry that we'll get from inhabiting Perseus 1 will help us build some, I don't know, bars or something. We'll figure out how to make people happy. Industry is the most important thing. As, as is the case in basically every Forex, right? Industry or production or whatever that particular game calls it. Okay, so we got these pirate ships flying around, making me really nervous. I don't think the Argosi has to stop. No, it doesn't. Okay. Man, that thing is fast. So we see a lot of ships. Uh, I'm not really sure... What's up with these guys? Can I... Oh, okay. Hey, how you doing? They're going to make another fleet in six turns. It's going to be made of prowlers. Uh, yeah, so there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of systems and numbers and all kinds of stuff that we are still, still uh, working on here. It's not exactly terrifying. I'll say that. So as their firepower meter fills up, and I assume this will happen as they like gain levels their ships get bonus stats, and I assume probably access to better modules and stuff. We want to get rid of these guys, obviously. You are a priority target of the pirates. If a mark is placed on you, pirate fleets will respond to the call from further away. Oh! These guys are mercenaries. We could just pay them off. They're not trustworthy, but this could be very useful. Support the pirates so their next fleet is stronger. This increases your standing with them and also slightly increases their power gains. Anonymously sabotage their supplies so their next fleet is weaker. Okay, I don't think we actually want to spend resources interacting with these guys right now. I think we probably just want to develop our own fleets and wipe them out. Let's have a look at the system that they inhabit here. Jungle, ocean, ice. This world has... A crappy titanium deposit and an okay hyperium deposit. This world has a moon. And even more blue cap mold. Well, you know, if there's one thing we don't have enough of, it's blue cap mold. Okay, let's design a ship. So first of all, we can see a pirate ship, right? Let's have a look at what their balance is. So their weapons, the, this, okay, let's talk about this projectile energy balance meter. Uh, all weapons and all, all offenses and defenses are either uh, ballistic in nature or energy in nature. So like um, missiles and bullets, mass drivers are on the left, while lasers and plasma and stuff are on the right. Uh, defenses are typed. You have uh, hull plating, which def defends against ballistic attacks, and shielding, which defends against energy attacks. And so we have to try to take note of what our enemies are running and build our ships to counter theirs and then if they're you know in this case we'll just wipe them out but if they were a player we'd be able to win a couple of big battles probably and then they'd go why are we losing so bad and figure out what's happening and adjust their ships and then we'd adjust our ships to counter and so you're always kind of like 
it's almost like a game of rock, paper, scissors a little bit. You're just trying to, uh, to constantly adjust to the other person's strategy. In this case, their defenses are entirely energy-based, so we should make some projectile weapon ships, probably with, uh, with more hull plating than shields. So let's have a look at our new ship types. We have the Aero class, currently called a Carve, which I guess is fine, whatever. Uh, and it is actually pretty much fine. It's entirely, entirely ballistic weapons and defenses. And we also have these protector ships, the NAR. Uh, the role of this ship is that it has more... We can, I can show you here. It has more of these support slots. Each slot on a ship design is typed, and you can only plug in certain modules to certain slots. These ships, uh, which have a... <laughs> I happen to know that the NAR is the name of a type of Viking vessel. Um, so these have, like, shields along the side. There's a strong Viking influence going on here, which I think is really cool. Uh, we are probably going to mostly go with the other ship design, but... What I wanted to show you is that the difference between protector-type ships and attacker-type ships is that attackers have more weapon slots, while protectors have more support slots, and usually more defensive slots. And we don't have any really cool modules available just yet, but we will, eventually. Let's have a look at our support modules. The Debris Analyzer will give us 20 science per destroyed command point. Is that... That's per command point of enemy vessels that we destroy, I think. So actually, it would be really cool to run one of these. Let's say, like, we put some hull plating here in this defensive slot. Uh, ballistic weapon in the ballistic slot. Do we want to go for missiles or bullets? Um, part of the value of bullets... In general, missiles have higher DPS. You can see 25 here versus 28 here. Um, and missiles are better at long range. Long range is, is valuable because each engagement will start, as you might imagine, with our ships approaching each other from a distance. So long range weapons get to fire first and they'll continue to fire uh, more probably over the course of the battle. Um, although maneuvers play a part in that and we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that when we have a battle. Uh, but missiles can be shot down. Bullets cannot be shot down, obviously, and in fact, bullets are what you use to shoot missiles down. Energy weapons are not so good at killing, uh, at killing missiles. Uh, in addition, there's this squadron mechanic that did not exist last time I played, where your larger ships can launch fighters and stuff. Um, boy. We're just gonna go with missile weapons, I guess, for right now take advantage of the long-range thing, but uh, this is going to bear some investigation. Uh, so we can equip, for this other support slot, we can equip a manpower module, which will increase the, the number of dudes the ship can carry. That's not super important in space combat, because uh, the base ship design has enough manpower in it to operate the ship, obviously. But it is important for things like landing on enemy planets and trying to take them over. You need to be able to ferry enough troops in to actually defeat the defenders down on the planet's surface. Not really a concern for this particular ship, at least not at this particular moment. So we could run another debris analyzer. We could also run some nano repair bots, which will give bonus health to the ship and also repair it partially after battle. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So part of the reason that you run these ships, in addition to their uh, slot makeup, is that, generally speaking, support ships have the Guardian and Defensive traits, which cause them to take more enemy fire and absorb that enemy fire slightly better. Uh, rather than running a third support module, I think we'll go ahead and play another point of plating. Or, you know, the pirates do have some energy weapons. Yeah, but it's mostly... I guess we'll split our defenses. This'll this will help make our fleet a little bit more resilient as well. Uh, you know, we won't be fighting these particular pirates forever. It'd be good if the, the, the fleet is adapted to a more general enemy profile. And here we have our... Uh, yeah. Here we have our very impressive defense ship. I'm going to want to conduct this battle at long... these battles at long range, mostly. 
but I think we're going to split our weapon types, and I'll explain why. We start at long range. As the enemies try to, uh, the enemy might try to close on us, and if they're able to get close to us, uh, missiles lose effectiveness rapidly. Uh, if they do manage to close on us, we get to use our, you know, our, our bullets will be effective, and once we start running into enemies that are also using missiles, bullets will help us be effective at long range by countering their missiles while our missiles hopefully go uncountered. We'll see how things work out. This is just me not wanting to go all in on one ship strategy while I'm still trying to get the handle of the new combat systems. All right, we're having births. Oh, population bonuses, right. I forgot about this. So each population type has collection bonuses. When you get to 10, 20, and 50 of a population type within your uh, empire, you gain your empire gains bonuses. So now we've gotten to 10 units of Vaulter population, which means we have... Our Vaulter population uh, now has additional plus scientist output, which means hopefully we'll be able to keep the scientist party uh, in control over the course of the game. Uh, Sisters of Mercy... Well, hold on. As we continue to get more Vaulters, our Vaulters will eventually cause our systems to produce extra science and extra manpower from... Si or extra science from manpower. That's actually really useful. Manpower on systems is mostly used for defense, but also it's used to staff ships that are built on those systems. The manpower in the ships comes from the system manpower, and then system manpower regenerates slowly on its own as people are born. Sisters of Mercy uh, get more religious when there's more of them. Eventually they produce plus 20% health regen on systems that have them, and a dramatic increase to the health of uh, ground troops. And these guys are scientists. They increase ha they increase science in places where we're happy and they exist. Oh, and all of the minor factions. That's right. All of the mi the wild minor factions, the the ones that you find out in the out in the out in, <clears throat> out in the universe, uh, have a special law that unlocks when you get to the maximum population bonus. I don't know what it is, and I don't know if there's a way to see it. Uh, also. Each faction has a resource associated with them, and you can spend that resource to increase the chance that births will be of that faction for 10 turns. And then, because there's not enough stuff going on yet, uh, each, each one has political traits, and these are important sometimes. So, like, these guys gain less ecologist political opinion by things that give ecologist political opinion. So you can see that's represented by this symbol being... Uh, smaller. Vaulter population eco ecologist support increases at half the normal rate. Uh, militarist support also increases science support, which means that as we fight these pirates and stuff, the military party probably won't be able to take over, over our government because all of the plus military events will also be plus science, which will help keep the scientists in control, which I like because the scientists have a lot of useful laws uh, that unlock as they remain in power. So we have, at this point, seven turns of production queued up here. Uh, we need we need ships faster than that. Okay, right now, at the beginning of the game, we have four command points to a fleet. This is a logistics issue. Uh, each of the ships that we currently can build uh, is has one command point. So we can assemble four such ships into a fleet. As we get uh, further up the military side of the uh, the tech wheel, we'll gain access to more command points. We'll be able to build better and more complex fleets. There's a lot of stuff going on. I like it, though. Like, I think that games sometimes tend towards simplicity for fear of alienating players in a way that isn't necessarily helpful to their... Uh, to their actual, like, playability over the long term. Uh, part of the reason that I like Forex games so much is that they usually do not do that. Oh, we can assist people at 50 now. I thought... You know, I thought it had to be 75, but... I might even be misremembering. It might be a change, or it might be that I just don't remember. Well, let's, uh, let's ask them what they want. Reach six population... Ah, of types that are not my main population. That actually shouldn't be that hard, and they'll give us a boatload of uh, titanium for doing it. 
The Calgaros representative stares at you, the sneer unmistakable. We are a proud race. Our culture forbids us from bowing down to those whose strength is inadequate. You begin to describe your empire's power, its vast industrial bases, shining fleets, disciplined armies. Uh, but the Calgaros interrupts, probably because all of that is a lie. Those things are only reflections of an empire's true strength. It's people. The Calgaros looks dismissively at your surrounding retinue. Grow your numbers, and we might begin to consider you a worthy master. Okay, yeah, this is something we absolutely can do. I wonder if it's going to be worthwhile for us to go ahead and spend a little bit of that dark glitter we found to push for more Sisters of Mercy population. I mean, approval matters. And once we get our system developments online and we get spaceports, we'll be able to redistribute our population between our systems to take better advantage of stuff like this. So we could move more Sisters of Mercy, for example, to that system where all of the planets are super hot and our people hate being over there. So I'm going to go ahead and push this. Population's growth is being affected by a booster. I did not realize that I totally just skimmed past this tooltip uh, when I was talking about this a minute ago. I didn't realize it doubled their population effect as well. Well, that's handy. Oh, I totally forgot we were even doing this. The event went off perfectly. There were the usual small scuffles that accompany cross-species diplomatic debate, of course. But overall, you find yourself breathing a sigh of relief. And we got 30 Hyperium, which is... I mean, whatever. Fine, not exciting. Alright, well, I think that we want to uh, we want to set down here as early as we can going to be 20 okay so these costs are going to scale up as we gain more stuff in our empire that makes sense all right it's going to be a few turns or we're ready to settle uh should we explore i guess so the ship's quite fast well hello deuvians also pragmatists also plus science and their trade is, wow, just minus 10% on all tax, huh? That is bananas. We need to assimilate these guys. Okay, the good news is we now have the ability to really uh, flatter key politicians. Let's just go ahead and spend, like, quite a bit of influence on this. As you can see right now, we're gaining four influence per turn for ten turns. We're going to do that one more time. Uh, that will get us above the threshold where we'll be able to take their quest. Okay, the Mind Matters event has come to an end. That's fine. We met these dudes. They seem alright. We've discovered Amianthoid. Because... No, not because it's the thing they want. Where did I discover Amianthoid? Huh. Yeah, I don't see the symbol for it anywhere. Weird. Okay. Somebody beat us to this deed. That's unfortunate. I kind of thought it might happen. Perseus gained a vulture population. That's unfortunate. Oh, actually, you know what? Perseus is completely peopled by vultures, so that's the only population that it can gain. And our hero has leveled up. So she's probably going to continue to be a system governor. Plus 10 food on system, plus an additional 10 food per fertile planet. That seems like maybe the way we want to go. This will give us one industry and one food per population. I think this is going to end up giving us more industry in total because of the additional births that it will encourage. Right, Perseus is entirely vaulters. Yeah, so any anybody born here is going to be a vaulter. We need to spread our uh, minor faction populations out a little bit, which we can do once we have access to system development. Oh, you know what I just realized? I think I glossed over uh, engine stuff with these ships, but we we do have access to an improved engine, which we probably should equip. Oh, the NAR doesn't have an engine in it. I filled the support slots with other things. Well, I think I would rather have the debris analyzer than the nano repair bots, probably. 
Let's cut these for a good Hyperium engine. A little bit of evasion, four movement points. And these guys also should probably have improved engines. So you'll notice this ship design doesn't even have access to the, de the debris analyzer. Okay. So we started building a NAR of the old design. We'll just have to we'll have to retrofit that after it's built. Wait, did we? The Empire will not tolerate ah. this. They're back for money again. Great. A small immigrant community is farming. Did we attract a new population type into our empire? Hold on. Uh, this one. Oh, that's right! The Tikanans, uh that we found on that planet, they, their ship hadn't actually arrived yet. So as soon as they landed, it fulfilled that quest for us, and it'll help, their presence will help push toward victory with the Kalgaros as well. Great, that's awesome. What is their deal? Uh, they like militarism. We'll get more uh, defense and manpower from systems with them eventually. Okay, and they're, they unlock a battle strategy rather than a law. Interesting. They're militarists, they are in fact anti-pacifist, and they're very aggressive. Oh, industrialist events support militarism. We don't want a lot of these guys in our, uh, in our empire if we don't want the militarists taking power of the government. And I don't super love the militarist laws, so I kind of don't really want them to, to be in charge. Okay. We should probably give these guys a little bit of praise. This will push us north of 50. I don't feel the need to spend any more uh, influence on that. Let's go ahead and scan some of this stuff. So I'd like to scan, I think, the stuff that's on the planet we're going to settle on. Oh, really? We discovered additional anomalies, or additional curiosities, rather. Also, lots of Hyperium and, uh, and Titanium, which is very useful. One of your exploratory drones, used by your team for rapid planetary assessment, has disappeared. According to your lead technician, this type of drone has a particularly low malfunction rate. He thinks it was intentionally sent off course by someone, or something. The drone has a cargo bay for collecting samples. Perhaps if you find it, you might discover what happened to it. Two sites look like promising leads, and they're both in difficult locations. So we just explore those. Uh, each expedition will cost five titanium. That's annoying. And a pirate, a pirate ship will spawn. But we will, you know, this will go somewhere and, and give us some kind of reward. I don't think we're going to do this right away. We'll get to those. We will. But uh, I want to wait until we have a fleet in place to fight the pirates. So, for now, let's use our two other probes, yeah, two other probes, to explore some of these. So, curiosities have different types, and different types of curiosities have uh, different chances, or they have chances to yield different things. The subterranean curiosity here is almost certainly just a resource deposit of some type for us to exploit, and given that we can't live on this planet yet, that's not super valuable. So, let's explore the other two. What have we found? We found another unit of Zvali population, which is awesome. I like Zvali. We've also discovered ruins. There are ruins in this system old enough and sophisticated enough that they must have come from the Endless. There are machines within machines, some of which are still running, and others that are so alien you're not even sure how to tell if they're running or not. It will take time to investigate properly. That is, if you don't just take the dust and run. So. Okay, we can get into the lore a little bit now. We can start talking about it now that most of the mechanics are on the table. The dust is used as money, but what it actually is, is like clouds of self-replicating, self-repairing nanomachines that somehow, in a way that nobody understands, are responsive to thought. It's not just 
something that you can trade to other empires and they'll be happy with you for doing so. It's also like when you expend dust to rush construction, it's that you are actually using, you, you know, you're directing the nanites to help you build the thing. Um, so that's why it's the most valuable thing in the galaxy and everybody wants as much as they can get. <laughs> and uh, that's endless buildings are full of it because it was it was created by the endless. So we could investigate, which I think is almost certainly what we're going to do. Uh, we'll take a five point science hit on each system for 10 turns, which sucks. But we'll get scientist ideology help to solidify the scientists as the, uh, the leaders of our government. And also we might find something. We can just loot stuff. There's a 50% chance of creating a major political crisis. No, we're, we're investigating, for sure. Okay, uh, what else? Leo has finished its magnetic field generators, putting us at three-fourths of the way toward completion here. We have access to some cool stuff now. We want to be careful with these portals, because we don't... We're still not totally settled on titanium. So I'm not going to build one right now. And if I was going to build one... I don't think Leo is where I would build it. Probably the, the first portal should go on the home system because it's the most likely to build ships. So... Plus five industry per citizen on hot and sterile worlds. Well, yeah, so we do have a hot world. We have a world that is both hot and sterile. We really increase the industry output of this world. Maybe what we want to do here, actually, though, is uh, spend some resources colonizing this savannah planet. We're about to hit the overpopulation uh, uh, slots here, so it would be good if our citizens had somewhere else to go. And there's some kind of resource deposit here that we don't know about yet. Let's focus on that. All right, we're about to have some ships. This is giving us food on anomalous worlds. It's probably a pretty good law to keep running. Yeah. All right, it's just making sure that we didn't need to do anything with our government. Uh, does the Perseus still have move left? It does. How many turns are we away from being able to settle? Okay, next turn, actually. So uh, it's not going anywhere. All right, new research. So now we have, uh, this is taken. What's the next one that we've revealed here? Be the first to create two trade companies to get the Ultra Wealth Sanctuary. A system improvement that dramatically increases luxury resource gain and trade value. That's not bad. And uh, trade companies are, are valuable and powerful anyway. But maybe we want something else. Additional science is good. I know we want to be able to colonize step worlds. We don't really get a huge benefit from researching things in this tier anymore. But if we want hardship bonus incentives anyway, which we do because you can see that research city's improvement that it grants is awfully powerful. Uh, I think... It's not really that many extra turns to uh, to throw machine bacteria in because researching machine bacteria will decrease the cost of this one, right? So if we get this by itself, it'll take 11 turns. Okay, so this says 13, but it's not actually going to be 13. It's not calculating in the cost reduction. We'll see what it, we'll see what that says uh, after that first tech is finished. So you're staying right where you are, and who else has move left? Well, he has a probe left. We should probably probe another one of these. That's right. We were we were totally going to. I spaced on it. I got distracted by lots of stuff. The life form that we discovered was, in fact, a plant. Eden incense. Okay. That's handy. So, we can talk about system development now. Here on the economy screen, we've unlocked level 2 modernization. The first system development upgrade. So, system development does a couple of things. Number one, uh, the level two system development upgrade enables use of the spaceport. 
Any system that has a level 2 system development can ship units of its population off to other systems, which lets us adjust our population balance in ways that might be very useful to us. In addition, the cost of modernizing is uh, you determine it. You, you decide what resources you want to expend to modernize, and that creates an additional effect. So, like, we have a ton of blue cap mold, right? We could say we'll pay 25 blue cap mold as our modernization cost, and that will add the plus 60 science on system effect. Um, most people, this is what luxury resources are used for, and, and luxury resources are all you can use for it. The vaulters, however, can also use strategics in this way. So, oh wow. Uh, as much as I love the blue cap effect, I think we might have to make our system developments out of Hyperium. We have a lot of Hyperium income. This is expensive, but 40, 40 science and 40 dust is awfully strong. Oh, this, this is much better. 40 food, 40 industry would mean that the first thing we build in each system would be the, the modernization and it would be incredibly useful, but we just can't, like, we're spending titanium to settle and we're eventually going to need it for ships and improved buildings and stuff. I don't think we can afford to use titanium as our first level of modernization. <sighs> what other stuff do we have access to? We have income of super spuds. So super spuds decrease the cost to buy out stuff in the system. Uh, we don't actually have income of any of these other resources that we've heard about, right? Yeah. Obviously, Jadonix is fantastic. And we have a lot of Hyperium income, but we don't have infinite Hyperium income. And this is kind of a lot. I wonder if I might be better off just doing the blue cap. So that we can use the Hyperium for other stuff. Yeah. And I mean, science is more valuable than dust in general, I think. Yeah, alright, we'll do this. Level 2 modernization will be made of blue caps. So, do I want to immediately start modernizing one of my systems? Yeah, probably, right? Uh, so we alt-click, puts it at the top of the queue. Oh man, we need uh, we need another planet. We're out of places for our population to grow. So probably we want this one, obviously. And that's a very long build. So we probably do not want to rush this. Now, I did not respond to the United Empire's last uh, threat for money. Because we're building ships. But the fact that I did that means that we should be ready. They're, they might send over a crew to enforce their demand. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. That may turn out to have been a mistake. It's just that now that we're building ships, I feel a lot more able to turn down the strongman approach. Okay, we've gotten too cordial with the nearest, so they're providing us with stuff now. Will not tolerate this. That's true, I did refuse to pay. That is what I am doing. Oh, you know what? I have the resources. <laughs> I actually don't have the dust for this. Okay, well. That's how it goes. Let's use the probe we produced this turn. Okay, dark glitter. Dark glitter's not bad. And then, since we know all about this already, let's just head off. I need a lot more dust. I was going to say, oh yeah, so see, Hardship Bonus Incentives actually is only going to take us seven turns to research. It actually saved us a lot of time to go and get the uh, the prereq quest, or the prereq tech. Uh, do I want to move you at all? Yeah, you're super fast. We got time. Hey, we've explored 20% of the galaxy. All right. Oh, we discovered the Academy. Famous as the center of training for all heroes, you hear that it is run by a Vodyani dissident and a few of his followers called Pathfinders. So, heroes. 
are not just great people. They're not just people who, it's not just like, this guy is real smart and good at talking to people, so he's a hero. Heroes are people who have, via the Academy, received training, uh, additional knowledge in how to manipulate the dust. That's what makes heroes capable of optimizing your empire to generate huge amounts of resources and stuff. They literally have superpowers, basically. Uh, so the Academy is very important. And the person who owns the Academy can see, uh, I believe, the level and current condition of every hero everywhere in the galaxy, among other such things. If I click in here, we'll get a little view of it. Yeah, that. Uh, the planet that it's orbiting is completely destroyed and provides no yields or place to put people. Okay, it's got some ash worlds in its system. Those are useful. You know, the hotter worlds produce more uh, industry, as I believe I have, have mentioned before. And here's the United Empire sending some ships over to threaten me. Well, the Argosi needs to turn the heck around. Boy, it sure would be good if I had a whole bunch of extra money all of a sudden. How are we... how can we do that? So you see, we've unlocked some new uh, modules for ships. These are support modules to plug into exploration ships. They're just better probes. Uh, planetary colonization of step worlds, which will be useful. Oh boy. We should probably just go ahead and level 2 modernize all of our systems. I don't know why I'm treating this like... Well, we're full on population here. We'll add level 2 modernization to this system after we finish colonizing a new world. Because I really do I want more places for population to grow. We're taking over Perseus 1. Yeah, okay. Alright. We need dust. We need dust and we have influence. Let's see if we can turn the one the into the other somehow. Ooh, these guys are rich. Your goal is greater harmony. What do we have that they might want? We could trade them some of our blue cap mold, although obviously um, I would like to hold on to enough of it to system boost. We might be able to just trade them like these little bits of stuff that we've been finding. Ooh, Dark Glitter, though, is actually specifically... Dark Glitter is relevant to the sisters. They like it. So maybe a little bit of this stuff. And... A bunch of super spuds. How about that? So... Oh, because I didn't... It's not deleting the first character. 40. Okay. How much would you pay me for that? Well, they'll, they're willing to give us one dust. That's a good start. Any chance? No, not even a little bit. What, like 50? No, okay, they're not... Do you want to maybe suggest some terms here? If I give them 790 manpower in addition to those resources, they would give me 50 dust. Okay, I see that it's going to be difficult for us to make a deal. Never mind. Well, the dust cost is going to come down pretty significantly over time. I'm a little concerned about how this is going to turn out. We may need to delay the colony until uh, until our fleet can show up. Lee! Alright, we managed to get them out of there before they could attack him, because I'm sure that that's what they will do. We might want to do the same with the Argosi, actually. How quickly is the dust cost coming down? Oh, it's come down enough that we can settle. And these are both average deposits, so these would add three um, to each of our strategic incomes. If we try to settle here and the UE, on, they see what we're doing, they can come and blockade the settlement and maybe prevent it from happening. I'm going to try it. Let's get aggressive. Let's get into there. Oh, that's right. We don't we don't put down outposts. We get colonies immediately. So they could they could attack. A declaration of war is a 
pretty big step off of a little bit of strong arming, though. I guess let's see if they do. Obviously, we're playing on the highest difficulty, and if you've ever played a 4X on the highest difficulty, you know that, in general, the AI players, in addition to um, having increased incomes and stuff, will also generally start with a bunch of free stuff. So he probably has a bunch of ships already, and this may have been a very dangerous thing to do. We'll see. If the colony does get attacked, I assume we'll get the Argosi back? Like, it'll flee the wreckage? Arceus has been marked as the target of a pirate contract. We could buy them off if we had the money. And we have no way of knowing which player did it. This is a new mechanic, this pirate mark stuff. The Empire will not tolerate this. Yeah, they don't love that. Okay. Yeah, this pirate mark stuff is new. I like it. I think it's a, this is a good mechanic. Well, we're about to have a lot of fighting to do. That's good, it's exciting. So yeah, build stuff, build stuff, build stuff. Our science uh, should be increasing dramatically as a result of the system developments. We're up to 419 per turn. Not bad. So Perseus, now done with what it was building is obviously going to start producing ships so Bertus and Iberius in the same system hey look it's some amoebas they help us produce influence if we assimilate them we should definitely try to make friends here We'll praise them this much. I want to save some influence for dealings. We might be able to bribe the UE to leave us alone. Might be worth doing. Okay, Perseus, begin the construction of defensive vessels. I'll just make another fleet. Same deal over here. Uh, actually... We don't have any fertile or temperate planets. We, we could use a little bit more industry, obviously. Uh, these are all things that would not be terribly effective. Yeah, just make the ships. Because this is only going to be 20 extra industry. Well, 20 is actually kind of a lot. Because we have two planets now, it's 20. Yeah, you know what? That's totally worth putting first. Provided that it doesn't mean that our planet is lost to... Uh, or that our system is lost to pirates, of course. Now right, we can grab a little bit of extra approval with these guys, and hopefully some free resources. Found a little bit of Eden Incense. Some more Blue Cap Mold, can never have enough of that. Ooh, and also Adamantian. So Adamantian is the next, uh, one of the next tier of strategics. Uh, the first tier is the Titanium and the Hyperium. Next you have Adamantian and Antimatter. And finally... This stuff, which I'm never quite sure of how to pronounce, and Quadradix. This is a valuable system. Hopefully we can get in good with these guys before the, uh, before the UE do. Alright. Let's talk to him and see if we can chill him out. You test my patience contacting the Empire. I was caught off guard a little bit here, because I kind of thought that he was um, below us, not to the right of us. Right, The first ship of his that we saw was below the capital, uh, so I wouldn't have expanded this way quite so eagerly, probably if I had known that he was who was over here. Well, I'm sure we could buy him off with some resources. Everybody loves stuff. Hey look, this is very valuable. How about we give you... How about we just give you five adamantium? Five adamantium. That's a lot, though. This stuff is valuable. I'm not... I'm not hoodwinking him here. It actually is stuff that I want. Hmm. You want peace? We can be buddies. How about we do peace and you get all of this adamantium? Nope. Not even considering it. We'll give you... Uh, oh, that's right. Sorry. Whoa. I'm adding... Adding terms with a single uh, point. We'll give you... I can't give him all of it? 
Five hundred? Yeah. Wow, that is not... That had no effect. Okay, he doesn't want our manpower. We have 247 influence to use for negotiation here. We might... Might be able to get somewhere. Nah, he really doesn't like us. Shoot. Well... I certainly don't want to give him a map of our empire. <laughs> Here, let's give him all of our dust. This is a pretty small cost to us. 180 dust is not enough to do anything with. But it might smooth things over a little. Once, I killed a man with my bare hands. Did you know that? I don't think the gift worked. He seems to still have feelings. Well, like I said, it's a pretty low cost attempt to placate him. Uh, it's only two turns worth of income and we didn't really have a great way of using it anyway, so... Alright, we're building ships! Wow, the pirate, pirate layer is leveling up. Oh, nice! Leo 3, uh, Leo 3 was uh, an antimatter world. That's handy. We don't have the ability to actually gather that yet, but now we know it's there. Uh, maybe we do build the portal on Leo just because the other planets in the system are very busy. People are just, cons just content here. We could try to fix that a little bit. Plus 10 approval for just two turns worth of production. Hmm. We also have access to these, like, wonders, and we're racing the other players. Only one of these can be built. It's powerful, but I don't think that it's, uh, that it's something worth spending our time on right now. We maybe should just build ships here, too. You know what? I am going to build the portal. We'll build a portal here, and then we'll build a portal on Jaya eventually. And ships that are built in Micra can just make the trip to Leo and port from there. That's not a big deal. The Galactic Census is coming up, and although you have greater worries on your mind, you remember what one of your wisest advisors once said. That a great leader is often judged not by his actions, but by the statistics he leaves behind. Perhaps it is worth investing a bit of effort to leave your mark on history, as the databases will remember it. So, we could, in less than 20 turns, possess two ships of at least 65 offensive power, which we totally will. Uh, in less than 20 turns, generate 148 industry in one of your systems. Or, in less than 20 turns, stockpile 400 dust. Well, we're doing this one, because these two reward genomics. And while genomics is nice to have... Um, we are extremely starved for titanium all the time. Plus, this is trivial for us to do. Economic might, more than any other program, will secure your legacy. Amass a dust fortune that will never be forgotten. I mean, 400 is not really a fortune. So the portal's not terribly expensive. Even industry-wise. I think we're going to build the portal. We'll let the drone network finish because that'll give us another 10 industry. But we'll move this up to above cerebral reality because we need to be able to get ships over here. Right. We are how many turns off of? Three turns off of having the rest of that fleet built. I probably delayed heading out for military stuff for too long, but it looks like we might get away with it. What is this? There's a colony here. Or an outpost, rather. Yeah, yeah, flip through this stuff. Whose outpost is this? We don't know the red player. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, well that's interesting. Listen, if you, stranger, want to create a buffer between me and the UE, you are welcome to do so. 
So, our goal, I decided at the beginning of the episode, was to control three planets, or three systems in the Fornax constellation to gain control of it. That's actually totally doable still. If we gain control of these two systems via assimilation and hold Gia, we will gain we will get the, the bonus for this continent. Or for this constellation rather. So it might be worth spending a little bit of extra Well, we'll be we'll be at 50 with these guys soon. It might be worth spending a little bit of extra influence here. I know we're gaining eight per turn, because we praised them a couple of times and we revealed some curiosities. I wonder if it's worth praising them again so that we can get the quest quickly. You know, we're not really using our influence for anything, and we are operating at a uh, at a surplus right now. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll get to we'll get the, we'll get there even a little bit faster. Okay. Welcome to the Sophonity. There are some among us who doubt your intellectual chops. Please prove them wrong. Okay. Sophons are interesting. They're a uh, science-focused civilization, yeah. obviously. Why are you knocking around? Ah. How do you guys feel about peace? They're not particularly interested in it, but th you know, this is maybe something we could buy off in a few turns. Something to think about. What are we going to do with the Argosi? We need to back off, obviously. Is this part of this constellation? This is probably Gemini, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you can wrest control back from people by outnumbering their settlements enough. That might be a problem for us here. Well, I think we're going to back the Argosi off and use it to finish scouting this way, I guess. I can't really imagine what else uh, we could use it for at this moment. I'm definitely concerned. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried. Okay, so we have our portal now. We can rush stuff to defend Origa. We've unlocked some uh, a single planetary specialization. Each planet can be specialized in a particular way. We could do this and just add a little bit of science uh, to our current population. Or we could really go all in here and produce a very powerful but expensive thing. We are still one system improvement away from moving our uh, faction quest forward. That might be a good thing to do. Uh, this would make a lot of industry on these first two planets, though. You know what? We'll work toward AI labor. We'll get our faction quest done. Don't worry. It's hard to know, like, how much we should invest into doing that. Because some of the faction quests award some very powerful stuff, and others are barely worth doing. <laughs> and I obviously have no idea with these guys. So do we want to do we want to spend probes exploring curiosities here? We would basically just be giving a little bit of value for free to Sophons. They might appreciate that though. And we get a little bit of free stuff when we explore. Let's look for like yeah, like life form and signal curiosities in particular cuz those are the ones that are more often just loot. So we definitely don't want to explore that. Let's let's check out what this is. It was a bunch of proto orchid. Twenty, unfortunately, is not enough to even use for a booster once. But this is something we could trade. Somebody will want it. We could sell it on the marketplace. That might be worth doing. And these are all atmospheric, so okay. This one is a higher level. It requires Expedition uh, Power 2 to even see. So this is more likely to be something cool. It'll probably just be an anomaly. Nope, it was something cool. It was 25 influence and a quest. The expedition made landfall days ago, but nothing has been heard since they entered a region of mild seismic activity on the second day. Electromagnetic analysis of the region suggests that their communication equipment should still be functional, 
so lack of contact is unlikely to have a technical cause. What should you do? Stay loyal to the missing team and send another party down to investigate? Or keep everyone aboard and not expose them to unknown risks? You have a bad feeling about this. Well... <laughs> we could rename the Perseus system to honor the lost and get some dust for doing so. It's kind of funny that that's a, that's a thing you can... Uh, I don't think I've ever seen renaming a thing be an objective in a game like this. I think we should try to rescue him, though. I don't know what exactly we will find, if we find anything, but I'm very curious, and we certainly have Hyperium to burn, at least a little bit. We owe the expedition team our loyalty, after all, who will serve us in the future if they think we'll abandon them at the first sign of danger. Estimate a 20% chance of the entire fleet undertaking the search being lost. That would suck, but we could build another one. So we have to search the curiosity here. I don't have any probes. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll get back to that. So yeah, we found some proto orchid. Also, it's hero time. So every once in a while, the academy will just hand out some heroes. You can also uh, pay dust to recruit mercenary heroes in the marketplace, but it's pretty expensive. So let's see what we got here. Norned Girit. So every hero is uh, every hero's skill wheel is made of three pieces. The top piece, the common piece, is the same for everybody. This piece is uh, determined by your faction. Each major faction has a unique lower right third, and then heroes that are from minor factions are broken up into groups like technologists and pragmatists and stuff. Um, technologist grouping allows you to get vision on fleets, hull plating. It's very ship focused. Uh, that's a lot of science. And plus 30% science. Okay, yeah. A, a well-upgraded technologist hero uh, can really boost the output of a system. And down here, each hero has a type, and that type determines the other third. So he's an overseer. The overseer branch has some pretty good stuff for systems in it, I know. Extra, extra uh, resources coming out of deposits lowered unhappiness, and then just raw output boosts. This guy's a strong contender. Normed Girit. Uh, this guy is a... Oh, he's a vaulter. He's one of us. And he's a seeker, so he has plus science on systems, extra movement range on fleets, that kind of stuff. He can be assigned to fleets that are outside of our territory. That's interesting. I don't really think he uh, he holds a candle to the other guy. Although, actually, Valters just have a uh, just have a version of that same percentage boosting skill. Dramatic increases to damage dealt to attackers on your systems. Interesting. Plus, percentage science per strategic deposit. That could be an awful lot of science. Man, maybe we take this guy. And then over here we have a you social counselor. Approval from citizens is awfully good. Industry and food. Big boost to influence production. I think we're gonna go with one of the one of the science guys. I think let's let's get the other Valter. His trees seem awfully good. So we'll just assign him as a governor somewhere. Maybe to the New World? It could certainly use a little bit of a push. And he'll get XP quickly because stuff will uh, stuff will finish a lot here. We'll be, we'll be finishing a lot of projects quickly. Do you need to spend his available skill point? So he doesn't have a lot of ways Im of immediately improving industry, unfortunately. You can do this, and I think we will, but it's not amazing because the population of this system is quite low. It'll get better over time, though, and I think a little bit of food and industry is better than um, a bunch of science. If we could have gotten a system improvement that was industry-focused, like if we actually had the resources for it, I would have chosen that in a heartbeat. 
Okay, you stay put. We probably ought to end the episode pretty soon here, but uh, let's let's go another turn or two. So we have access to this now. Colonize ice. We are one tech off of having proper access to this tier. I'm not really making much use of the fact that we can cheat up tiers with our researches. I just, like, the tier bonuses are often pretty valuable. So what do we have left here? The ability to colonize Arctic worlds and another really great science improvement. Compact warp methods allows us to explore moons and improves the, uh, improves the output of the moon anomalies. That's pretty great. And anomalous materials will enable us to use wormholes. Wormholes are like hidden space lanes that dramatically accelerate your movement can be awfully useful and will allow us to turn off the negative parts of anomalies that are partially positive and partially negative. These are all very, very powerful, obviously. Uh, do we have any Arctic worlds in the systems we currently inhabit? This is a gas planet. That's a gas planet. And all of our other stuff is currently inhabitable. So we don't we don't need that part of Graviton research. The building's good, but it's also going to be pretty hard to build. Anything that comes out of a tech at this level of the tree is going to be a lot of industry to actually create. Maybe we should lean into military stuff a little bit more. We could also head up this side of the tree, unlock the next level of system improvement. Uh, and the ability to mine these better resources. Yeah. That's probably what we should do. We have a planet that has antimatter on it. Oh, and this tech will also give us the ability to colonize gas planets. Yeah, as extreme atmospherics. Without question. We have enough science. We're really tearing through these. Okay, one more turn until our first fleet is ready. Oh no! Damn it, that is... That sucks. We didn't get enough growth of our non-main population. I had so wrapped up in a bunch of other things that are happening that I was not paying enough attention to it. Alright, let's do this. Let's find out what's up with this quest. Rescue party touches down on the planet, close to the site of last known contact. Success. On the fifth day, the rescue party picked up a weak signal coming from a system of caves within the region that the original team disappeared. Upon investigation, they discovered the team surviving inside a Vodyani craft near the mouth of the caves. Although the crew gave conflicting accounts of what had happened, and possessed equipment that was prematurely aged, they were found to be in fine physical and mental health. After some simple repairs to the Vodiani craft, both the rescue party and the missing crew were able to leave the surface and return to the fleet. Insights gleaned from the whole affair have triggered a scientific renaissance across the Empire. Wow, 20% science is awesome. We also spawned a ship. A combat vessel, not a particularly great one, but still. I think we'll have that fall back and uh, defend Gia. This is a good time to find something like that. Okay, I'm a little reticent to head this way because I expect that there's a Sofam inhabited system over here, and I think they will be mad at us if we enter their borders. We know the UE doesn't like us. What am I just going to not explore? Here, let's, uh, let's free move over to here, and then we'll fire off some probes in this arc and see if we can find somewhere else to move to. And we just got 60... Science. That was a pretty good event. So I'm noticing that these uh, the pirates are not responding very quickly to their uh, to their mark, which I'm happy about. They give us time to actually complete our uh, our ships. Okay, the Sisters of Mercy population boost boost has come to an end. It did not help us very much. Okay, so we are now cool with the... Uh, so, sorry, we're cool with these guys. Let's see if we can get their quest done. 
any quicker. Build 12 or more buildings in your empire within 15 turns. Jeez. I, it's doable, but... It's not ideal, considering that I want to be building ships right now. A devastating disease outbreak is currently running rampant through the Deuvian's home system. Thousands have already succumbed to the infection, and tens of thousands more are sick. Every, everyday life is close to the breaking point. Critical industries are scraping by with skeleton crews. Medical facilities are overrun with the unwell, and food shortages loom. Civil unrest is likely to soon spill over into outright rebellion. As the Uvian leaders attempt to manage the outbreak, one vital question remains unanswered. Where did the disease originate? Tracing the outbreak back to its inception and identifying Patient Zero could well be the discovery that breaks the plague's stranglehold. While Deuvian scientists establish the identity of Patient Zero, the Deuvians have asked if you can provide immediate relief for fleeing refugees. Okay, yeah, we'll try. Swift building program to house, employ, and care for them will be greatly appreciated. Yeah, and I mean, we want to be building buildings anyway, right? So 12 or more buildings within 15 turns. That's not ideal. We really have a lot of other stuff that we want to be building. We gotta try, though. How far are we from these guys? Two more turns until these guys flip. Or until these guys are... We can ask them what they would like, at least. Alright. We have a fleet. Oof. We have a slow fleet. Oh, that's right. Hold on. These guys are all the wrong design. I didn't... Ah. We updated the movement design, and then I didn't go back and change the... Uh, blueprint that we were building from. They were all queued as twos. That's not great. It's going to cost 70 dust to upgrade each of them. Which we just do not have. Hmm. How am I going to get a small amount of dust quickly? We could just stay put. Uh, I'm trying to... I'm trying to stockpile 400 dust, aren't I? Yeah, that's that's bad. I did a bad job. I should have canceled the uh, the existing build orders. Why can I not select this fleet? There we go. This is going to be 18 turns to get, to get over here due to our incredibly bad movement. Well, this can just be the Gia defense fleet. Let's move over to here. By the time we get to Leah, uh, to Leo. The portal in Jaya will be finished, and then we'll just come through and hang out at Jaya. Yeah, that's actually fine. That's not a big deal. So Perseus is building ships. Unfortunately, we really need to not be building ships right now. This is an awkward, uh, an awkward request for them to have made at this at this juncture. Oh, hey, elections. Uh, I think it's unlikely that we're going to have an effect on the outcome of this. It looks to me like the people are going to go scientist pacifist. But you know what? Let's throw our official support behind the pacifists. Well. If we can push hard enough for the uh, ecologists to, take, to overtake them, that would actually maybe be good for us. We get access to this. Well, which we can't afford to run anyway, right? We're just barely positive on influence. It kind of doesn't matter who gets it, actually. I guess we'll just throw our support behind the scientists. Maybe we can swing public opinion to uh, keeping the scientists in charge throughout whatever comes next. All right, no big surprise. Our new hero is the uh, the leader of the pacifist party, since they did not have one previously. We've become amicable with these guys. Oh, that's right. The stockpiling of dust is somewhat uh, made a little bit more complicated by the fact that I'm trying to assist these factions as quickly as I can. Alright, let's see what we can see. Okay. The UE is down here. So I had kind of assumed that they were, like, around here-ish. Judging from... I think the first time we saw one of them was coming up this lane, right? 
So maybe I wasn't uh, maybe I wasn't even that wrong. This is a problem. This is gonna have to get dealt with. Yeah, this is not not great for us. At least he didn't steal one of the ones that we care about. Wait, why was that law canceled? Oh, right, because the ecologists lost their position in the government. Well, this might be a good time to go to the Dirty Hands Act. If we have to try to build a bunch of things in quick succession... In particular, Jaya could probably use the little bit of uh, the little bit of a boost that we'll get from that. Okay, this is just a scout ship from the Unfallen. Hmm. We could have this ship go privateer. I don't think there's any real benefit to it. No, just chill out here. Actually, we'll uh, we'll disband this fleet. Store the ship in the hangar. Because uh, if it's flying around the planet, it can be attacked at any time. This is like garrisoning it in a city in uh, in most 4Xs, except that we'll have to uh, we'll have to launch it before it can do anything meaningful. Whereas a garrisoned unit in a like Civ or something can usually fight. Well, don't see anything yet. Send one out this way as well. Okay. Let's see what these guys want. We're making dust quickly enough. We'll still make the 400 uh, in time. It won't be an issue. These guys want us to assign a hero to a fleet and then send that fleet to Beerus and have it hang out for six turns. And then they'll give us our money back. Truth be told, the dust-obsessed religious fanatics of the Amoeba Splinter Group are an unnerving crowd unnerving but powerful the opinions of this small group can easily t uh, tilt the balance in the decision of your uh, to join your empire so when the leader looms close eyes intense and asks will you help us you don't really have much choice also i don't think they have eyes they worship dust and they want you to send a hero to cement their political influence among the population okay new guy is not super powerful so, Gia losing him won't be the end of the world for them, and I think that's what we're going to do. What's his reassignment cooldown? Four turns. Okay. It's kind of a long time. She is providing... Oh, she's providing a lot of food. Yeah, alright. I think we'll uh, we'll let him do it. So we'll wait until his reassignment cooldown is up, and then we'll send him over to Beerus. It sucks to have to wait that long, but it also, getting a control of Beerus isn't that important if we can't also get control of Beertus, because again, our goal is to take control of the constellation. Well, I guess this has Adamantian. It really would be a shame to lose this. That said, I think we're we're going to continue with the plan as it stands. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I don't want to look at this. I want to move my ship. So an awful lot of United Empire exploration vessels running around. Okay. What did we discover? Anything? Success! Ten dust per turn on systems for 15 turns. Okay, that's... That's fine. We use the machine to generate some dust, so we're getting an extra 40 dust per turn off of that for 15 turns. That's, yeah, that's totally fine. We have discovered some nebular clouds, which I don't think... Well, I was going to say I don't think there's any chance we'll get a hold of those, but maybe we want to come over here and take this system. We have the ability to. We can inhabit these uh, these gas giants, which have a ton of industry on them. And this one actually gives a lot of dust as well. This one gives a ton of science. Yeah, you know what? Turn this ship around. Oh, there's no way we're going to be able to uh, to lay down the colony. We don't have the dust. I can't even see the cost if the Argosi's not here. Hmm. 
Do I... No, let's hold off. Let's explore a little bit more. We'll come back. I don't think that this is under threat of being settled immediately by anybody else. And I want to go ahead and save up dust to complete that one quest. Because we really could use all that uh, titanium. Okay, I think things are going all right. Things are going well enough. Decreasing tensions lead to a general increase in prices for luxury resources. So we haven't looked at the marketplace at all. But it's pretty much what you would expect. Oh, that's right. We actually don't have access to the ship and hero half of the marketplace. That's behind a different tech. But we have access to strategics and luxuries. We could sell a bunch of something. Actually, maybe we should do that. Make the dust right now and not have to worry about it later. These are selling at 15 each. Well, shoot. Let's just... Honestly, I have no use for them. Let's sell them all. Bam. Bam. Quest complete. It probably won't actually complete until next turn. And I guess we will turn this guy around, and we'll, we'll have the money to settle that soon. We are also in need of another research. So this will unlock the other half of the marketplace for us. We could research neural robotics instead, more industry buildings, and of course, the ability to exploit adamantium, which we may gain access to soon. But maybe commercial frameworks is a good way to go. This will let us build trade companies. Trade companies are a powerful source of dust. We still need the ability to, um, to use dust to rush things. I think we're going to queue that afterward. We'll get the ability to make the trade companies, get the ability to acquire the dust we need, and then get the ability to put it to use. So we don't see any anything over here yet. The slowest fleet in the galaxy has finally reached its destination. That's a pretty neat animation. And we did that, got our huge stockpile of titanium, which I feel extremely good about. Alright. Once you've spent four points in a tier, you unlock the next tier. Uh, obviously, Geniocrat... Efficiency aficionado is super good. Like we have a lot of a lot of good stuff waiting for us in these second tiers. And Perseus is six turns off of having a functional fleet. Well, at least those ships will have the nice engines in them. And we have, in fact, discovered some other stuff to explore. Alright, so Gia's tearing through the upgrades. Uh, Leo's about to have a huge amount of industry to work with. All right, this is going to add, what? Well, I guess just 20. Not that huge. But it's not bad, certainly. And then we can, we have a couple of uh, cheap things that we could build, I think. No, not really. Okay, we can make these two, which are each only 224. So these will each be two turns. This won't be too much more... Uh, I would like to pin this. We have 12 turns to make 12 more buildings. Or sorry, 11 more buildings. I don't know that we're going to do this. Turns on his thing. That was a long turn. Uh, I think we're just going to disband, chill in the... Uh, Chilling the thing here. I guess we actually can upgrade all these ships now, can't we? You know what? What am I thinking? We got all this dust. Let's upgrade these, and then, now that they can actually move, we'll send them pirate hunting. Actually, through the gate was the most efficient way to get to the pirate world anyway. Oh, they don't have the manpower to actually eliminate a base on a planet, though. Probably. Well, that's a problem we'll have to conquer in a second here. Let's, let's see what our options for interacting with the pirates are when we orbit their fleet with hostile ships. Okay, we need to make buildings as quickly as we can. This sucks. That's a lot of turns. <laughs> we need it, though. So the world we currently inhabit is cold and is not temperate. But this represents more than a 25% boost in output. 
Uh, this will actually be more effective. Well, how, how quickly are people being born? Yeah, the next one will be born in three turns. So we'll have four population probably shortly after this is completed, each of them getting um, plus four industry. So yeah, this is better. Neither of them are great. Okay. These guys, I think what we should do is praise them. I don't think we're going to get this, but we can just get them to 100 uh, approval and then... Yeah, okay, so in 10 turns... We'll have, uh, we'll have them assimilatable. We might actually be best off getting these guys the same way. So we'll, we're getting, we're going to get the same rate of increase for two more turns. We'll be at 96 and then this will fall off, but the praise will be enough to get into a hundred. Yeah. Okay. Assimilation by quest completion is for suckers. How much dust do we need to put down here? 1788. Well, we do have some more stuff we could sell. Oh, wow. Those are very valuable. Okay, so next turn we'll be able to settle that. Yeah, that's all right. The adamantian deposit is unfortunately on one of the worlds we can't settle. And also that world is quite bad. Well, still probably worth it, though. It is a pain to get a hold of the higher level strategic resources. Well, at this point, I don't believe the UE is going to uh, show up and blow us all up. So that's a start. Oh, here come those pirates, though. Alright, so right now in orbit there is one pirate vessel. More are coming. But I think we should go ahead and launch the ships we have right now. Hold on. Is this... Yeah, okay, this is basically the thing we saw before. Two ships versus one. Should be pretty straightforward. Uh, our vessels are better at long range than they are at other ranges, so we'll... Uh, we have access to these fleet tactics. We get to set on a menu that we'll look at in a minute our tactic for the turn, or for the battle, from a hand of fleet guards. And we earn more fleet cards by advancing up the military tree and also by discovering new military uh, tech at uh, anomalies, or curiosities, rather. So we'll get more of these, we'll get better ones. For right now, we definitely want to use a tactic that's going to put our fleet at long range to start. Plus 15 dust per lost command point on fleet is hopefully not going to be useful because we're not going to lose any command points. So we'll take this, plus 75% shield absorption. And we won't watch all of our battles, but let's go ahead and watch. We'll watch, we'll tend to watch important ones and also we'll watch this first one just so that you have an idea of what's going on. So we don't have any direct control. We issue the commands, we build the fleets, and then stuff happens. Yeah, skip to action. We don't need this intro nonsense. Well, okay, that was pretty cool. So let's turn off the auto camera, go to overhead. How do I control this thing? Okay, let's turn on the battle statistics. We might have to get closer to the ships for the, uh, the individual ship statistics to show up. Yeah, here we go. This is what I wanted. So we can see... It's various, uh, let's swing around this way, I guess. Yeah, we can see it's, uh, it's shielding and it's plating and damage levels and stuff. Uh, so this is mostly useful for diagnosing what's working and what's not working. You can see some of our missiles are getting taken down by, uh, its ballistic weapons, and it's also got an energy gun of some kind firing on us. We are... Sustaining enough damage that I'm worried about having to fight two of these things at the same time next turn.
But you certainly can't say that didn't work. Oh, that's right, we're hovering around a friendly planet. We could just, um, use dust to auto-repair. Uh, will that delay our settling? How much dust do we need for the settle? 1376, and I'm actually at 1637. Okay. I want, I want to do the repair. And we will... We'll uh, settle on this one, right? I think I, I want to settle on the one that has the science. Okay, we're settling on Rookbat 2 next turn. Oh, that's not what I... Uh, how do I cancel order? I want to undo order. You know what? I'm just going to disband them. That'll kill the order. And then we'll pop them back out again next turn. It'll work the same way. Alright, I think we should be able to defeat two of those ships at the same time with two healthy ships. I was pretty worried about taking them on with uh, with ships that had already sustained damage. Ooh, I'm so. sure we have what you need. Okay, we don't have any options that are uh, unlocked by being in a position to threaten him. So we could initiate a ground attack. We have 400 manpower on our ships. They have 500 manpower. This would not work, obviously. We can sit here and blockade, though, and every pirate ship that comes out of the system will have to deal with us to get out. And since I imagine the ships, based on the way they've been moving around and what we've seen, I imagine these ships um, trickle out one by one, we should totally annihilate them. So maybe what we do is we use this ship to contain pirates emerging here. The fleet that's being built on Perseus can defend Perseus. And then once the wave of whatever is done here, Perseus's fleet can head up toward Eridanus and we can use the two fleets together to destroy the pirate base. And then I assume we get control of it, which will obviously uh, be very helpful as well. Okay, so we're not worrying too much about trying to get these buildings done. We have a different plan for that. So let's... Does any of these any of these particularly need to be pinned? Yep, yeah, this should be pinned because I'm going to forget about it. So we need to explore these quest curiosities, which means we need another ship with probes, or we need to call our other probe ship back, I guess. Uh... I had totally forgotten about this. Yeah, we probably need to bring this ship back. I should I should do that quest. I guess we have a lot of probes built up though. We'll uh, we'll land here. We'll explore. We'll fire off some probes, and then we'll head back. But I think we'll do all that next time because I kind of let this one get away from me. But I do have other things that need doing. So that's gonna be it for us for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Come back next time. We're gonna see if we can't steal control of this constellation, at least for the time being. And we'll see you then.